Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This picture contains candlelight, but the candles don't light the scene. They are known as practical lights. A practical light in photographic terms is a light which is there for effect, not necessarily actually adding any illumination to the scene. This scene was lit with studio flash and yet also captures the light from the candles. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So, to show the technique, I've built this uh, scene. Uh, and we've got a few candles in here and a few other bits and pieces uh, and a few interesting textures. Uh, so, it will be the way that this is lit, which is what this video really is about. OK, so as usual, I'm using a uh, full frame digital SLR. Uh, just with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. This is also capable of controlling the energy in the flashes. The camera is tethered into Capture One software so it's easy to see the results as I go along. OK, so I'll just pop this on the top of the tripod and we'll initially just line up the shot. So I think I need to be a little higher so I'll just wind this up just to get a different perspective. There we are, something like that. And I think I'll just zoom that in a little bit. So possibly just a little bit like that. I don't want to go too far, but something like that should do. And we'll just focus that up. OK, so with all that now set, what I'll do is just grab an image just to make sure that we don't get any contamination from the house lights. That will become important uh, later on. So what I'm going to do is just turn the camera on like this and the software has recognized the camera so I can show you here what settings are on the camera at the moment. So it's in full manual mode. I have a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, 100 ISO and at the moment I've set the aperture to f8. Now that will probably change but we'll see how we go. So with these settings I'll grab an image. Okay you can see then at those settings there is very little picture there. But obviously I'm going to try and be capturing candlelight so the likelihood is that I'm not going to be using uh, 250th of a second for the shutter speed. I'll be using something quite a lot less. So let's just put in something less for now and just see what happens. So if I go down to say a 50th of a second and grab another image, now you can start to see uh, various parts of the scene which are illuminated by the house lights. So what that tells me is that when I come to do the actual picture with the candles lit, then I'm going to need to turn out the house lights. But for now, we should be OK uh, at a 250th, which is the flash sync speed, obviously, for this camera, uh, to set up the flash. So I'll just pop that back to 1 250th. So, and we'll set the first of the flashes. So for this scene, what I want to do is actually uh, illuminate this so that it brings out the texture uh, in, the, in the side of the bowl here and all the various uh, bits of tree that are around. So what I'm going to do is use this Profoto B1X, which is a 500 joule uh, flash head. Uh, battery powered. I'm just going to place this about here somewhere so it's giving a sort of glancing blow down the side of the, uh, the bowl there. So we'll just try and get that in something like the right position. I think it will be about there. Okay, so with that in approximately the right place, uh, I'll just select that head uh, and just turn it on. There we go. So at an arbitrary energy level, uh, I'll just grab an image and we'll assess the exposure. Well, that's not too bad straight away, I think. Um, so I've got some nice detail going on down here. Uh, 
I'll just zoom into that for a bit. This is all nicely lit. Uh, there is quite a lot of contrast in the scene at the moment, uh, and there's nothing at all on this side. Uh, so what I want to do at this stage is add something uh, just to give me some light down this side. Now I don't necessarily need to add another light. I can recycle some of the light from this one. So to recycle some of that light, what I'm going to use is a mirror. Uh, and I'm using a mirror on purpose because it will give me uh, a very hard reflection. Uh, I'm not actually trying just to fill this in, I want to fill it in with a very hard light. Therefore, by using a mirror, it will give me a very hard light source. Now, in order to get that in the right place, what I'm going to do is turn the modelling light on, on this head, like so. And so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to turn the house lights out. OK. So with the house lights out, um, what I can do now is adjust this mirror like this, just so I can get this into just the right place so it catches the edge of the, the bowl. There we are. So I think that's about right. OK, we'll grab an image and see what we get. Yes, that seems to have done the job. This is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. And we've controlled exactly where that is going. But this area in the front here is still a little dark. So what I want to do is just fill this in with a very soft overall light. So for that, I'm going to use another B1X, this time with a two foot by two foot uh, soft box on the front of it. And I'm just going to place this fairly carefully just in here, like this. Something like that. OK. Uh, now again, this is a bit of guesswork, um, so what I'll do is um, just come along and turn that head on. And again, at an arbitrary energy level, uh, I'll just grab an image. OK, well, I think that's possibly a little bright. Um, what I might do is just take a, a stop off that, and now we'll grab that again. So the overall exposure uh, is uh, better than it was, but I think this bit right at the front here is still a little bright. So what I'm going to do is just flag that off, and I'm just going to use uh, a piece of card to have here, just on a piece of wood to make it stand up on its own. I'm just going to place that just in here, like that. And hopefully that should stop some of this light getting onto the subject. So we'll just grab that again. There we are, that's taken it down a little bit. I think I want to take it down a bit more as well. Um, so what I can do is just add uh, yet another piece of card. So here I have another piece of card. And I'm just going to place this just in here. Just like that. OK, so hopefully that will stop this area getting quite so bright. Let's just grab that again. There we are, that's much more like it. So it's taken all this down uh, quite nicely. OK, so with that now done, uh, it's probably time to set up uh, yet another light. Now, what I'm going to do is set up a light right round the back here so that um, when the candles are extinguished, uh, I can highlight the smoke and then add that smoke to the uh, completed photograph later. You'll see what I mean as we go along. So what I need to do is just add another light. So I've got here a 
Profoto D2. This is a mains powered light. We're just going to place this about here. And I'm trying to place it in such a position that the camera can't see it, but it's only just being obscured by the edge of this bowl here. So with that in this position, what I will do is just turn these other lights off and turn that light on and we'll take a test image. And you can see that I've got a sort of rim light around the edge of these bits here. Uh, but this over here is fairly well illuminated. So yet again, I'm going to use yet another flag just to flag that part off. So I'm just going to place that about here somewhere, like that. There we go. So with that in place, I'll just grab another image. There we are. That's uh, changed it quite a lot. This is what we had before, so all this is quite well lit. And this is what we've got now. So that's taken that down. All right. So there are still a couple of areas. This area over here, for instance, and just here you can actually see the clamp and so on. So another couple of pieces of card, and that should be sorted. There we are. So that's got rid of all these distractions. OK, so at this point, I think we can probably turn the house lights back on. There we are. And just see exactly what it is that I've put here at the moment. So what I've got is a piece of card here, which is stopping some of this light from the softbox getting to this corner. Uh, I've got another piece of card at the back here just to stop any infill from the uh, fill light at the very back. Same on the other side. Uh, a mirror just to bring in this part of the, the bowl. And a flag at the front here just to stop the very first candle getting a little over illuminated. OK, so with all that done, the next stage would be to light the candles. OK. So now we've got all the candles lit. Uh, what I can do is uh, now I'll turn the flashes, all of them, um, back on again, like so. And now I'll just grab another image uh, and we'll see what we get with everything on at the same time. OK, so the overall scene isn't bad, uh, but the candles are a little lacklustre. We need to make them more prominent than they are at the moment. Now the way to do that is to actually increase the exposure just for the candles. So what I can do is lower the shutter speed on the camera. Now if you remember before when I did a test, um, if we lower the shutter speed then the house lights will influence the picture. So what I'm going to do is once again turn the house lights out. So with the house lights out, what I can do is lower the shutter speed and initially I think we might just go down to um, what a fifth of a second and I'll grab that again there and instantly you can see that the candles are a lot more dominant than they were before but I think we can go a bit further than that so I will take these all the way down to half a second. And we'll grab that again. There we are, that's more like it. And you can see the effect that they're having uh, on the uh, bowl here and also the candle, it's actually illuminating part of the wax around the flame, which is what we want. So the other thing I'll do is just have a look at the depth of field that we're achieving. So this is the handle at the front of the image, which is looking quite nice, quite sharp. And this is at the back. It's starting to go out a little. So I think I could do with a bit more depth of field. 
So what I'm going to do is change the aperture from f8 to f16. Now that's a two-stop change, so I'm going to need to add two stops of energy to the flashes. There we are. So with that now done, I'll grab another image. OK, so that has now uh, increased the depth of field. So if I now zoom in again, have a look at the candle at the back, this is now in focus. And the one in the front is in focus as well. So that's good. So that's done what I wanted, but it's taken the exposure down a little bit on the uh, candles. So what I might do is just add um, a bit more to their exposure by changing the shutter speed from half a second to one second. And we'll just grab that again. There, that's brought it all back to life again. So that's good. OK, so finally what I want to do is just grab an image of the smoke that you'll get off the candles after they've been extinguished. Now, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is turn these two flashes off. So I'll just do that now, like that. So it'll be only the flash at the back which now illuminates the smoke, hopefully. OK, so with those flashes off, what I'll do is extinguish the candles and we'll have a go. And we'll take a few of these just as the smoke dissipates. OK, so now with those uh, captured, what I can do is turn the house lights back on and just evaluate the pictures that we've got. OK, well, I think that's turned out uh, quite well. So what I need to do now is pick the best of the smoke ones and one of the ones with the candles lit and go into Photoshop and just do the post-production. So here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up the files of the two images that we captured earlier. So this is the candles all lit and this is the one which we took extinguishing them so that I could show the smoke. OK, so to combine these two, what I'm going to do is just go on to File here and ask Photoshop to make me a stack of the images. So load files into stack, add open files, and just click on OK. Right, so over here we can see that Photoshop has made a stack of those two images. So that's just the smoke, and that one's the candles. So in order to combine those, um, what I can do is go from normal as a blend mode to lighten. And it's really as simple as that. OK, so there are a few things that need doing to this image. One is I need to control exactly where the smoke is, uh, is number one. And number two is there is a slight line here uh, which is caused by the piece of card. So if I just temporarily turn off this layer and we'll work on this one, which is the candlelight one, uh, what I need to do is just get rid of that line. Now the uh, easy way to do that would be just to use the healing brush tool with a relatively small brush and I'll just hold down the Alt key to pick a sample point which is about there and then just move that up and place that on the line. There we are, something like that. Now by going at one end and then the other end and holding down the shift key, it will draw a straight line between the two. There. So that's now gone. That's good. So with that bit done, what I need to do now is just turn the candlelight back on, like so. And we just need to control exactly where all this is. 
So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just add to that layer. So I'll just select that layer and add a layer mask. But I'm going to invert the layer mask to hide it, like so. So now wherever I paint in white on this mask will reveal that part of the image. So just making sure that white is selected as the foreground colour. I'll pick a brush of a reasonable size. There we are. And now I can just paint in the smoke, like so. There we are. And once again, there's a, light, a slight line there. So if I just zoom into that corner, like so, uh, and again, to get rid of that, I'll click on the image in that layer, go on to the healing brush, and this time with a fairly small brush, I think. Again, just pick a sample point and just create a bit of chaos. I'm doing this fairly quickly. You could take a bit more care, but you get the idea. There we are. So with that done, I can just zoom back out again. And we'll select a crop. As usual, I'm using this for video, so I'm going for a specific ratio. But you just need to pick something that will suit your image. There we are. And finally, I think just at this side, um, I need to just take the whole of this down ever so slightly. I think that would add to the image. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just add another layer. Again, there are hundreds of ways to do this. Uh, this is just one of them. Uh, just with uh, black selected as the foreground color. And just on that layer with a fairly large brush, I'm literally just going to paint that down the side, just to take that down a little. I'll just make this match on the other side like that, just to concentrate the view. And there we have it. So by altering the shutter speed on the camera, I've been able to enhance the look of the candles and keep the exposure on the rest of the image correct. Then with the addition of some smoke from the extinguished candles, which have been again enhanced by being backlit, that has really lifted the image, I think. And overall, I think that's worked rather well. OK, well, I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.